it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe if you're also back welcome back thank you so much for joining me again but if you're new and maybe you like what you see please consider subscribing because we have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty and every now and then we mix in a chatty get ready with me where I cover a certain topic and today we are talking about Love is Blind season 4 the three new episodes that just debuted before the final wedding ceremonies and the reunion so these are like the lead up episodes and they are spicy there is a twist and we were not expecting it okay so if you want to get ready with me and just chat about love is blonde i'm doing this look it's really fun it's really colorful it's for easter because i'm going over to my brother's house right now then let's go ahead and chit chat and i will talk to you soon all right guys so this lighting seems valid for now we'll see how it goes i have my window open like actually open to let in some fresh air because i damn near burnt the curry on the stove just now so i'm making um curry tripe but the thing about making curry the jamaican way and i don't know if other cultures do this so let me not even say but the jamaican way is to burn a little bit of curry in the oil first before you um put the food in the oil right girl I was getting ready to film I'm multitasking like I'm doing laundry so if you hear my washer going it is just a thing right now so I'm getting ready to go over to my brother's house again they're having Easter dinner so I'm cooking tripe we're gonna eat fish but my brother's mother-in-law what do you call that part of the family like she's my brother's mother-in-law so really she has no relation to me but she is my nieces and nephews grandmother so it feels odd to just not call her something so i call her my mother-in-law as well but then again i call everybody mommy so i call her mom but anyway i call my mother mommy all right so if you ever hear me say mommy you know it's mommy but she also mentioned to me, she was like, yeah, but you call somebody else mommy. And I'm like, yeah, mommy, but you are mommy. It's two different mommies, okay? But she knows that I call maternal figures mommy, right? So what do you call your siblings' in-laws? She lives with my brother and my sister-in-law. So I call her mom and she's my mother-in-law and that's just how it is, you know? So anyway... I'm making that because she's um, traveling soon and I'm also traveling soon so I need to just make it and bring it there so she can have it even if they end up freezing it but at least it's there anyway how are you guys doing so right so I burnt the curry so it's like all smoky in the house so I had to in the apartment so I had to open the windows to let the smoke out and my neighbors are probably like oh my god what did she burn but it is what it is, so I'll probably need to run back and forth to the kitchen. Um, yeah, because my uh, pot pan fire. Anyway, y'all, oh my god, did you see the get ready with me that I did? It's extra long, so I understand if you didn't watch it. But I was speaking about Love is Blind, the fourth season. And I mentioned, if you guys wanted me to, I would follow up with the new episodes and there were three new episodes released on Friday and I went ahead and watched them and girl <laughs> what is going on so we're gonna talk about those new episodes while I get ready and I actually want to do something colorful and fun even though you can probably tell can you tell it's about to rain. It looks like it's about to rain and I want it to rain, okay? I need it to rain. I love the rain and I've said that so many times, but especially like tropical rain where it's still warm outside even though it's raining. I love that. In New York, I used to love the rain and like thunderstorms in New York. What? When you have a Norista in New York? Oh, I loved it so much, but the problem is it would get cold. But in Florida, 
it gets a little colder than normal but it's not freezing like it would be in New York so you still want to have like your windows open you want to be outside and all this and I can't really open the window in the kitchen because there's a little dirty lizard that lives there he just hangs out in the mesh you know that little mesh the bug mesh that you have at the window so the bugs don't come in so he lives like in between the little mesh and the window so technically if I open the window he's gonna get his little greasy self inside and I am not about to fight with no lizard okay lizards and me no we're not fighting okay I am not about to have it out with no lizard in the kitchen can you imagine oh my god I have not had baby lizards make their little way inside since my last episode because I sealed off well I had the people come in and seal off the door so there's a little gap at the front door there was a little gap in the um what do you call it the frame right so it led to outside and they would find their little way in through that gap and they would just come inside and I would be fighting for my life so I found that little hole because ants were coming through there and I was like ah so I told them come in seal that off I'm not playing with y'all not with the rent that y'all want me to pay girl why are rents so high like what is that about that's another story for another day but it is ridiculous I don't know if I mentioned this before but my rent in Florida is actually higher than it was in New York for a smaller place. So that's not okay with me. Coming to Florida, you think you're going to save on expenses. No, you're not. The only thing you're saving on is income tax because there is no state tax. But let me tell you something, okay? I don't appreciate living in Florida and how expensive it is even though I'm here fooling myself into thinking this brow is too thin isn't it this brow always like suffers oh my god but yeah I thought I was getting away with ch a cheaper living expense by coming to Florida come to find out nope actually more expensive and I just renewed my lease for one more year because my lease is expiring in two months it's already been a year and I can't believe it but there's no way I'm gonna find a house between now and then so I just went ahead and renewed my lease even if I have to break my lease I'll just pay the um the penalty because girl I can't be bothered and they hike the rent up so here we are and yeah it is what it is, but that's what's going on now. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about love is blind. Have you guys caught up as yet? If you haven't, go and catch up. Or if you're not watching it, let me tell you about it. So like I said, if you haven't watched my other video, I will link it so you can check it out. Link it over here so you can go check it out. But girl, they come back with the newest episode we left off from Chelsea's um, birthday party. So Chelsea is the speech pathologist that's with Kwame and she had a birthday party where everybody met up and we were left on a cliffhanger with Jackie and Josh having a conversation. So Jackie is paired with Marshall but she was also interested in Josh in the pods and she finally met him in person at Chelsea's party. And so they left on a cliffhanger where she was having a conversation with Josh at the party, right? So he was telling her that he was still interested, blah, 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 right? So I just had to run to the kitchen to check on the tribe. So I lost my train of thought and the rain started falling. So I had to close the window a bit. And also my eyeshadow primer base started creasing because this is not again a primer that will stop creasing it's more of an eyeshadow base which is just going to give our eyeshadow something to stick to and I'm using my Kat Von D eyeshadow primer in the shade Sin this is a light primer that's gonna help to pick up color really intensely because I want to do like I said a colorful look so we pick up after Chelsea's party and you know blah 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 Jackie and Josh were having a conversation but we are back with the couples and they're planning 
the weddings, right? So the weddings are coming up shortly in a few days. They have to go dress shopping, they have to do the bachelor parties, they have to meet the rest of the family, all this, right? So the look that I want to do is something colorful. Have you guys checked out this creator? Her name is Irina Soroka. Beautiful looks, like, come on, that is stunning. So I'm thinking of doing something similar to that. Look how pretty that is, right? Oh my God, it's so pretty. Or even something like that. I don't know, something bright and pretty but I don't know where I'm going with it just yet. We're just gonna, you know what, go with the vibe and see where it takes us. So I'll start out with a light shade on the lid. The shades I'm using are mainly from Terra Moons. So I put them in this magnetic palette. No, this one is actually Sydney Grace, it's Sea Breeze. I don't know if they still make this shade, but it's a light mint. Yeah, that is pretty. And you see how it's picked. Let me, let me, let me, come in, come in. Hi, how are you? So I'm gonna pack this color on. So anyway, we come back, right? And let's start out with like a boring couple, or I should say like a less dramatic couple. So we have Tiffany and Brett. Tiffany is the one that people say look like me. Now people have mentioned that she's my twin. I wouldn't go that far. I do see a resemblance, but we're not, I wouldn't say we look so similar that it's twinish. Maybe that's just me. I never see it when people say, people, that's your twin, and I'm like, no, I don't see it, okay? I have a sister, so I have two older sisters on my father's side, so my half-sisters, and they kind of look like Tiffany. So yes, definitely a sister, but I wouldn't go with a twin. Anyway. Tiffany and Brett are the black couple, older couple, she's 36, he's 35, they're very successful, and she is like having a hard time, she's like crying, snot and everything, now I'm going in with a lighter blue, the light blue is from Terra Moons, and it's lunar or later, really pretty, but she's like getting very emotional because she's stressed out about planning for the wedding, it's like a whole situation, but she meets his father and brother. She didn't meet them before. They're meeting friends and everything. And all in all, it just seems like they're a really good fit. I think they balance each other out. You know, I, I just love them. I think they're a very mature couple. I think they're a great match. The only thing that I didn't like that was said is when they mention like what they like about each other so all the families are asking that well i feel like it's scripted i feel like not necessarily scripted the answer but the question is always scripted it's like the producers want the answer to that question like what do you see in this person like what what pulled you in like what made you attracted to this person why did you choose them and one of the things that they keep bringing up as a couple is that Oh, you know, they're really ambitious, they're really driven, they've lived in poverty, so they know what it's like to be without and they never want to be in that situation again. So they're always working hard and I'm like, I don't like that because I'm personally trying to fight against that. It's the American way is to just hustle, hustle, hustle and work hard and just go, 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 go because you never want to ever be in the position where you're poor again, right? Or like you're struggling. To me, it's a very high pressure way to live because you want to provide for your kids, your future, so they don't experience what you did as a kid because your parents probably suffered to provide for you. So you're working hard to make sure that never happens for your kids, but in the same breath, you're sacrificing a lot of like your free time and your happiness because you're always stressed and you're always going and it can get overwhelming. And I think it's the hustle culture that is prone to Americans. Like American society, oh my God, hustle culture. It's just like, you have to be a millionaire. You have to make this amount of money. You have to be wealthy. You have to this. And it's like, do you? Do you really? Is that what gives you happiness? And I've never been that type. I've always been the one who will tell you, I want to be comfortable. I'll tell you, I want to be comfortable. 
I want to be able to live comfortably, not struggling check to check. And I want to travel as well. But at the same time, I don't want to give up my free time to get to that place. I don't want to work 80 hours a week just to be in that position. If I have to sacrifice my that much time to get to that level of success, then I don't want it, you know? You can keep it. I'm fine with just being comfortable. I don't have to be wealthy. I don't have to be a millionaire. I don't have to have the power and the fame. Like, y'all can have that. That's fine. All these colors that I'm using are from Terra Moons. They're right here. They're very powdery. Very, very powdery. I will leave the, um, the shade names down below. If I don't, just remind me if you're interested. Only if you're interested. I don't even know if they make these shades anymore, which is another thing about indie brands. But yeah, like, I don't care about being wealthy. I don't care about being a part of the 1%. I just want to have a soft life. It's not even like a soft life. Everybody's saying the soft life thing. But no, for real. I just want to enjoy my life and live and enjoy the little time off that I do have. Like, I'm off on the weekends and I'm not going to work on the weekends if I can help it. If there's an emergency, it's one thing, but I'm not gonna make it a practice to work on the weekends, no. Just because, oh, you need to get this project done. No, and when clients expect that of you, oh no, that's not gonna happen, sweetie. I know you have a deadline and that's cute, but I'm not working on my weekend for you. I'm not doing that. I'm not traveling on my time off for you. I used to have a boss that expected us to travel on Sunday to get somewhere to work on Monday. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it because that's my weekend. That's my time off. I will travel on Monday. And if I don't get to start work like mid afternoon, depending on where I'm going, then we're going to start on Tuesday and it is what it is. And I'm coming back home on Friday. It is what it is. But yeah, they like that about each other, that they're both hardworking and, you know, they both have those aspirations to, you know, being a, a good financial place for their future family. And Brett seems to be in a pretty good place and he's not worried about money. And to me, Tiffany comes off like she thinks she's won this great prize and she just cannot understand how did she get this lucky? It's like, it's overwhelming her. And I'm like, oh, Tiffany, you don't think that you deserve this because Brett is a sweetheart. He's so supportive. So she's crying over the wedding, right? And she's saying she's stressed out. Like she was even stress cleaning their apartment. And he comes in and she's crying on the couch and he's trying to console her and comfort her and everything. And she's just bawling because she is so stressed about the wedding prep and she just got back to work and she can't seem to find her bearings again. She can't seem to get her foot in because if you leave work for two weeks, which I think they did for two weeks, leave their jobs and they're back, there's a lot of catch up. And for you to try to still be on top, you, you're playing a lot of catch up. Plus you're trying to foster this new relationship, film for the show while still working and planning this wedding. So she's very stressed out and he's like comforting her and he plans a date where they go on a seaplane, they go over water, they take in this great view and then he blindfolds her and brings her to this rooftop setup where he has pictures of her with her engagement ring. So it was so sweet. I was like, oh, Brett. And I want to know how much of that was him and how much of that was the show like feeding into it. But either way, it was really sweet and she felt so loved and I'm feeling like she's never experienced that before. So it meant even more for him to reassure her like, He's in it and he's having that conversation with her. Like, listen, I'm in it. So don't think this is a fluke. Don't think, you know, something's gonna change or, you know, I'm gonna go running. I'm in it, right? So he's trying to just reassure her. And I thought that was so sweet. They are so sweet. And it seems like his friends and his family really welcome her and they really like her. 
and I don't know that her family has met him. I don't remember her family really meeting him like that. Now that I think about it. Her friends met him though, but I don't know if her family met him. So her friends meet him as well. And everybody's just so wholesome. And it's such a great positive view of black love. And I was just eating it up. I was loving it. So they're, a, you know, they seem to be a pretty stable couple. I think they're in it for the long run and I'm just excited to see where it goes. I am happy for them and Brett is someone I would date. He would be someone that I could see myself dating. He's that sweet. He's a sweetheart and he's fashionable. So it's just like, y'all, I could get dressed up with you too. Cause I tell you right now, it's so great to have someone to dress up with. Cause I can get fancy and I'll have someone to match my swag. So definitely love them. Then we have, let's move on to Micah and what's his face? What's his face? Paul? Is that his name? Yeah, Paul. They also seem to be a boring couple too. They are very bland. I'm not gonna lie to you. They're very bland. And when they speak about each other and like what attracted one to the other, it's very surface and it's very shallow. And I don't know if, if you guys see this or it's just me, but I feel like their relationship is very surface. It never gets very deep. And I don't know why that is. Is it because they've not necessarily had struggle in their lives so they don't have those stories to share? What is it like? Why is this relationship so bland? Like it's very surface level. I'm using the Glow Recipe Strawberry BHA Blur Smoothing Drops all over my skin. I'm gonna have to run back to the kitchen. But their relationship, like there were no further hiccups. She met his people, he met her people. Everything seems to be fine. No real hiccups in their relationship at all. So it is what it is. Then we have Kwame and Chelsea. Oh my God, here we go. So with these two, it keeps coming up that Kwame is sacrificing a lot and that his mom doesn't approve. So in the last few episodes, we know he called his mom to get her approval, to invite her to the wedding, to tell her about Chelsea, and his mom was having no parts of it. So they kind of dive into that a little bit more. And apparently he told Chelsea or said to her that he didn't want her taking his last name until he got approval from his mom. So Kwame is Ghanaian. I'm gonna use this light shimmery. It looks like a uh, icy white, but it's like an icy mint shade. Ah, oh, icy mint. You know, icy mint from Jamaica. Icy mint is a mint candy. This is green mist from Sydney Grace. They have red mist as well, which has a red tint to it, and blue mist, which has a blue tint. They're really pretty, like, come on. So, um, his mom is very Christian, like, they have these values, and she expected him or wanted him to marry a traditional Ghanaian girl from the church, right? She even mentioned that his mom probably even still thinks he's a virgin, and I'm like, Okay, I mean, if that's the type of thing you want to carry on with, all right. But, like, there's that hiccup there. His mom is not very accepting of the relationship. And Chelsea is feeling it because her family love him. And, you know, they've been very accepting of him. He went and met with her mom and her side of the family. So I believe the mom and dad are divorced but the mom is remarried and they went out to this um house that they have on a lake they're having like a family dinner and chelsea wanted him to be a part of that so he could feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that he would have family if he moved 
to Seattle, which is another hiccup because he lives, I mentioned it before, he lives in, in Oregon, in Portland, Oregon, which is about three hours away, and his life is centered there. So he's expected to give up his life and move into Chelsea's life, which keeps coming up. He keeps bringing it up like he's given up his life to pretty much come and fall into her life. So I don't know that meeting her family was doing what she expected it to do because she was like, oh yeah, see, you'll have family here. Because he mentioned that, you know, she has somewhere to go if she's feeling out of whack. She can go to her friends. She can go to her family. She has even her apartment to go back to. He has nothing and he can't just drive to Portland for three hours to lay in his bed and find his center. His friends aren't here. He was a professional soccer player, so he's not playing soccer. Like, he doesn't have his grounding place in um, Seattle. So he's grappling with that and just wondering how he's gonna adjust and everything. So he's still dealing with that. But her family, very welcoming. They seem very nice. But one thing that I didn't like about how Chelsea um, introduced him to her family, and I don't know if this is a thing with um, white families, that they introduce you by listing out your qualifications. So she's like, oh, he has his MBA. He was a professional soccer player. He's so talented. Like, why are you leading with that? Like, couldn't he just be a nice person? Why does it have to be based on his credentials, you know? That kind threw me off because why do you have to qualify Kwame based on his accomplishments rather than who he is like you know it made me feel like she was trying to let her family know that she chose well and it's okay he's accomplished he's not just some black guy from down the street with good dick which she seems to really love to have sex with him Ch Chelsea is a but yeah, I didn't like that. If you've experienced this, is it just like a qualifier? Like you introduce people based on their credentials, like their resume, rather than just be like, hey, this is blah, 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 and we met blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know, because we don't introduce people in my family like that. You know, it's just, hey, this is my guy, or this is my girl, like this is my person, you know? I don't have to qualify anybody in fact i'll tell you right now i don't know half of what my family even does <laughs> like what no for real though i'm gonna use you know what i'm gonna use should i yeah i'm gonna use this nyx bear with me blur blurring skin tint i haven't used this in a little bit and someone asked me in my last foundation review if i would choose this or the foundation that i was testing which was the um the gucci foundation which i would choose the gucci but i said let me go ahead and use this again to like say for sure the gucci is my go-to the gucci is my go-to because once i wash it off it feels good the shade match is really great and the transfer resistance is there along with the finish and i just like how it looks on my skin and how it wears but I also like the blur with me. So it just depends on your budget. I am a little bit snobby when it comes to makeup. I'll choose high end over drugstore any day. Not to say the drugstore isn't great because this is great, right? It's a great foundation, like everyday foundation, but I'm gonna go high end all the time. <laughs> I feel like the ingredients just feel better on my skin long term. And then once I wash it off, my skin still feels comfortable. Sometimes with drugstore foundations, yeah, they'll wear well, they'll look nice, the finish is great, but when I wash it off at night, I don't feel like my skin has gained anything from it. Like, there are no additional benefits. And yeah, the NYX foundation is nice, you know? I just feel like, yeah, I'll stick to what I said. The Gucci one just sits a little better it looks a little better that's just my personal preference though so take that for what it is you know but i don't know hello I don't what yes, yeah well no wait for me 
No, don't wait on me. Okay. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know how to feel about that whole interaction, but her family seems to be very welcoming, and we'll see where that goes. They also went and did a photo shoot. Oh, I used shimmer on that one. They went and did a engagement photo shoot which is a little bit sexy this is why i'm telling you chelsea's a little bit freaky it's like they were in underwear they were taking sexy shots i mean it didn't look too sexy it wasn't tacky or anything i thought it was cute so she's definitely embracing her body and she wanted to get someone that was comfortable doing it with her and kwame was very open to doing it with her because you know has a decent body he works out he's obviously active he's a you know his body is cute his hairline a little you know questionable and the haircut a little weird but it's fine i don't think kwame is even a bad person i just don't like that his goal is to date white it feels that way you know and i i just don't like that and i know his mom is like Shh, i want you to marry a Ghanaian girl and he's like mom i'm gonna tell you this no and he definitely wants the acceptance of his mom he doesn't mention his dad too much but he definitely wants the acceptance of his mom and he mentions that you know listen she raised me for all these years of my life it's the least I could do to get her acceptance so I'm with him on that and we'll see how that works out their wedding is actually the one that we ended on so they went and did the dress fittings the families were there you know everybody was emotional chelsea's mom and friends were there like it was a whole thing he went did his, his fitting and then they get to wedding day and of course his mom is not there but his sister and brother are there which is good so chelsea gets to meet his sister they have spoken on the phone and the sister is very warm and welcoming the sister brings her a purse you know that's something blue something new that has kente cloth on it so trying to like merge the cultures and everything so i thought that was cute at least the sister and the brother are there to support and they go in and they're supporting kwame and letting him know like we're here you know mom will come around don't worry about it i know you want her blessing but just go with what's in your gut and you know it's gonna be fine you know it's gonna be fine but we're here to support you so it's it's good to see that he at least had some support what i noticed was that during his fitting like for the tuxedos and everything he brought somebody from the pods as his friend and that's so sad that he doesn't have his friends with him in seattle which is something he's going to have to you know figure out if he's gonna give that up and he's keeps bringing it up that he's sacrificing he's the one giving up a lot he's the one changing his life over to be with chelsea she's actually benefiting at least that's what he said okay because he's now coming to be a part of her life and he's pretty much a built-in babysitter a dog sitter for her dog right so he's essentially saying he's making her life easier but he's given up a lot of his life and it's true i mean at the end of the day he's given up a lot of his life and he has to come and just kind of fit into hers and he doesn't get like his own identity he's kind of just merging with her life she doesn't have to change much her family's there her friends are there her job is there like all her history is there but he's the one that's going to have to start new so we'll see at the altar chelsea you know says gives this whole speech that she's written and how she loves him and blah 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 and she says yes yeah, she's gonna marry him and they leave the cliffhanger with his speech and we don't know if he says yes or no my guess is hmm, he's gonna say i don't know like low-key he might say no because his mom didn't approve but also maybe he'll say yes and just run with it because he seems to like chelsea but it's like does he really really like her i don't know like that's where i'm still left pondering if he really really likes her and if he's willing to change his life over 
I don't see the strong vibe from him, but from Chelsea, you definitely can tell that she wants this and she's in love like she's in love but Kwame keeps having these conversations with Micah all the damn time of whether or not they made the right decision so it's obvious that he still has this chemistry and connection with Micah that he's feeding into and I hate seeing it so I could go either way with Kwame I don't know if he's gonna say yes or no so we're left wondering low-key low-key i think he might say no because he keeps bringing up all the sacrifices he's making and his mom doesn't approve and all this stuff so low-key i don't know if he's gonna say yes guys i don't i don't so then we move on to zach and bliss oh lord of mercy zach and bliss oh my god so the last Time he met Bliss's mom and sister but now he's meeting her dad and her stepmom and I guess her other sister little baby sister and little brother and they come over to the house and everything and they sit down and they're having dinner and straight out the gate <laughs> The dad does not like Zach. He does not like Zach. Like, he's asking questions like, what's going on here? He's asking about sports if Zach fishes, if he plays golf. And Zach is like, no, I actually don't. And he's looking at Zach sideways like, oh, what kind of man this? So already right out the gate, you see that he's not a big fan of Zach. And the fact that they've only met 20 days ago and they're rushing into this marriage, he's showing his disapproval. Like, he is not keeping it in at all. Like, he's letting them know he doesn't approve of how they met and how quickly they're getting married. And he's like, well, good luck. And you can see that the relationship between him and Bliss is a little bit strained. Bliss? is very patient she did not like cuss and carry on she was like all right i hear you however you know and it, she's she's definitely been in therapy for this because she's given him the t the therapy speak and i'm like you know what bliss do what makes you happy girl don't worry about this man because he's telling them that they're headed for a divorce he doesn't know what they're doing they've only met 20 days ago and here they go trying to get married and i mean you're not wrong okay because the situation is not ideal like you met 20 days ago he got engaged to someone else you're getting married in a couple of days this is a whole social experiment like it's weird okay so i don't blame him but if you feel like this is your person and you're gonna do it then do it don't let anybody like dissuade you from going after your happiness and bliss was in control okay she's obviously had to battle back and forth with her dad before and she stood up for herself she's like well we're doing this so it is what it is and i'm being serious about it like i thought about it don't think this is just spur of the moment like it's serious to me because you and my mom got divorced and i don't want to participate in that because it did a number on me okay hold on food i'm back so she stood up for herself and she put him in his place like you don't get to make this decision i do and leave me alone so that was just very awkward because her dad was just her dad was not having it he was not happy with the situation her little sister they seem a little odd too like the whole family dynamic there was just a little bit weird and I don't know if it's just because of the camera or what but it was just weird it was weird and then her and Zach had a conversation when they were in like a hot tub and she's talking to him about it like you know listen I don't want to go through a divorce you know I want to be sure and she wants some reassurance from him because again she was the second choice so she's a little bit apprehensive but she does love him she keeps repeating it that she loves him and i think she genuinely does love him and she feels connected to him and i don't know zach is a little bit weird because the way he chose irena had me questioning his yeah i did question his judgment because you chose Irina, and Irina was ooh, 
not a nice person to say the very least so Zach is a little bit odd and he brought up the story about Romeo and Juliet how they didn't work out for a reason and he keeps bringing that up and in the preview he brought it up again when they're getting ready to walk down the aisle so he seems a little bit apprehensive because her father is not very welcoming of him which i'll say i do agree to an extent if the family doesn't like you it makes things very awkward especially if the person you're with is close to their family like if my family doesn't like somebody it would make it very hard to be with that person. So I'm very peculiar about the people that I introduce to my family because if it goes sideways, that's gonna cause a problem because if my mom, for instance, my mom likes everybody. If she doesn't like you, I know it's not gonna work out. So I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, I feel like you shouldn't let your family necessarily dictate like who you end up with but it does factor in it does factor in and we see that it's factoring in with Kwame and Chelsea and now with Bliss and Zach we'll see how it goes though we will see and during the dress fittings again we have the families and they're being so sweet bliss's mom is a sweetheart and she seems pretty happy for bliss so i think the mom is being supportive but the dad is just a straight douche he is a douche and i think he just needs to be a villain <laughs> You always need one of those, right? So he's definitely the parental villain and Kwame's mom is the other villain. <laughs> like, listen, all right? But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Zach is definitely questioning the family situation and he's mentioned before in the pods and repeatedly that he has an issue when people don't accept him, right? And I feel like he's getting that vibe from Bliss's dad, especially. So we'll see how that works out. I'm rooting for them because Bliss is so pretty. She's so nice. And I think she's being genuine. Zach is a little weird, but that's not for me to judge. Like, that's on her if she wants to be with him. Like, who am I, right? So we'll see how that goes. And then... We are left with, who are we left with? We've done Micah and Paul. Boren doesn't seem to be like any big issues there. Kwame and Chelsea, Brett and Tiffany, and we just did Bliss and Zach. So now we're left with ah, the PS de Resistance. So we have Jackie and Marshall. <laughs> so remember I said, you know, everybody's doing the dress fittings and the, the tuxedo fittings and Marshall's there getting fitted for his tux. And Tiffany texts Brett. She's like, uh, so just want to give you a heads up. Jackie didn't come for the dress fitting because Jackie was nowhere to be found. And everybody's like, where's Jackie, right? Jackie didn't go for the dress fitting. All the girls are there getting their dresses. They're doing the whole say yes to the dress kind of situation emotional speeches all this not one sign of jackie okay lo and behold she did not show up and tiffany let brett know and brett in turn let marshall know so marshall was like oh okay and he's embarrassed because his friends are there they're getting fitted and everything and he's like well she didn't show up for her dress fitting so he just walks out because obviously if she's not getting fitted for a dress what are you getting fitted for because she's not going to show up to the wedding so what are you doing out here looking crazy so he walks off right and then it cuts away to her meeting up with josh so josh was her other match in the pods and she's having like a little meet up with him and he's letting her know how he feels like he wants to be with her for real for real and like he's pouring out his heart and it's a whole situation right and then she's letting him know that she told Marshall that he needs to man up and you know boss up and he left for three days he wasn't at the apartment and you know he's too 
he's too what sensitive for her too emotional for her and i'm like imagine all this time we're telling men that they need to be in touch with their emotions they need to be more open and, and talk about, you know, what they're feeling. And Jackie comes along and she's like, nah, he too soft. He's not rough and tough enough for me. And I'm not about that life. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, that is not nice at all, right? So she's talking to Josh. I'm gonna have to put an outfit on. So she's talking to Josh and all this stuff. And at the end of her talking to Josh, she says to him, that she's attracted to him wait 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 she makes a comment at the start when they were talking about meeting each other for the first time because remember they met at chelsea's party so she said she heard his voice first and realized it was him because remember they met in the pods where they were just hearing voices so they don't know what each other looks like and this was her first time seeing him in person so when she heard the voice she was like oh that's josh and then she said her nipples got hard and i'm like lord have mercy what is going on so come to find out she's like yeah i'm definitely attracted to you and like she is just i'm like she's saying Marshall ain't laying pipe like he need to and now she meets Josh and she is attracted to him and the chemistry is there and she wants him to park his big Mack truck in her little garage and I'm like oh my oh my god I can't take it I can't take it right so she's like yeah I'm interested in in like seeing where this goes I'm definitely not saying I want to marry you because that's what he asked he's like would you marry me so he's trying to do kind of what Zach did you know with the broken engagement and trying to get re-engaged or whatever and she's like listen if it's marriage that you want I can't give that to you right now but I'm definitely open to seeing where this goes and then they hug at the end of the meetup and she kisses him and I'm like what the fuck is going on oh my god so let me go put something on and i'll be right back all right i am back and for the lip we're gonna use one of these new jones road lip tints so they sent me these four shades i believe they're new shades so we're gonna try one on so yeah jackie and um josh met up they're having the whole conversation and she goes back to the house and then Marshall shows up and they end up having a conversation and she's like, listen, um, I met up with Josh. I just saw Josh and I'm attracted to Josh and I cannot love you the way you want me to love you. So, um, <laughs> bye. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, my whole spirit, like I didn't... <laughs> I didn't know what to do like at that point that would be my villain origin story like I would knock everything over like what <laughs> like, poor Marshall she's like nah sir listen bye <laughs> and I am low-key cracking up but at the same time like it's hurting me to see his face because he's just like And he was also mentioning like at the fitting that she didn't text him or give him the, the heads up like no common courtesy to let him know like she's not doing this you know and I felt in that moment for him I was I was so hurt <laughs> I was so hurt like I was like did she just yes she did she sure enough did she really said this is not my vibe this is not gonna work out thank you so much come again can you imagine and he was like so you don't want to do this okay here's the thing though i forgot to mention this in the last video that i did Ooh, okay so this is the shade what is this just pinky okay remember they had the conversation where she told him to to man up like he's not you know he's not rough enough he's not aggressive enough so in that conversation she'd asked him like why is he with her like why is he interested in her if she's not giving him everything he needs? And he said, and I quote, I think of you as a project. Right? I was like, what you mean? You look upon the people and pitney as projects. He was like, yeah, I, th I thought of you as a project that 
I could change you. I could make you see that, you know, you need a nice guy, an emotional guy. And I'm like, uh-uh. So he was dead wrong for that. I didn't mention that last time because it completely slipped my mind. But yeah, he's not an angel in this. Like, he's, he's not an angel at all. But she was mad nasty with how she treated him. She was like, yeah, whatever. So he's like, so then are you going to be with Josh? And she's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And I'm like, what you mean you going to find out? Like, that is so grimy. That's the very definition of grimy. And then he said, well, I want the ring back. And she's like, well, I'm going to keep the ring. Okay. And whatever. <laughs> No, why are you keeping the ring? Because y whatever you said in the pods, it was fake. Like, you shouldn't be accepting the ring and keeping it now, given what you're saying. And she's like, well, I'm going to keep it because whatever I said in the pods, I meant it. And I was feeling it at that time, but now I'm not. And I'm keeping the ring. And I'm like... And then he's like, well, keep the ring then, but every time you look at it, whatever you do with it, I hope it reminds you that you gave up something good. <laughs> and she's like, all right, well, take care. All the best, you know, see ya. And she literally said that. And I'm like, oh my God, how callous can you be? Like, how mean can you be to say that to somebody that you just share, like, a whole life experience with because this is an experience right they went through it together they went on a trip together like this whole thing and you're just like peace out like have a good time like have a good life take care she said take care and i about passed out i was like and she also was like yeah i'll see you around or maybe not and he's like definitely not right and i'm just like this situation is awkward as hell because after this conversation, now they need to pack up their things because he's leaving, right? That was, <laughs> that was so terrible. And then they're doing like the interview afterwards and he's like, well, if that's what she wants to do, I wish her all the best, you know, good luck. And I'm like, we know that good luck was underhanded. You're like, oh, you want to be with Josh? Good luck, sweetie. Good luck. And then she was saying, you know, I'm sorry, I can't be with him. And then she was like, you know what, matter of fact, I'm not sorry, okay? I'm not walking down the aisle with that man. And I about passed out. Wow. I did not expect this from her. Honestly, you could see that she wasn't vibing with him. They were cute. Like, I, again, say I like them individually, but as a couple, I don't think they match. And honestly, after that whole episode, I'm like, I don't like this girl. Like, you don't do that. To, don't play with people's feelings like that. That is hurtful, but I don't think he's innocent in it all, you know? There must be something that was said along the line that we didn't see. And then Jackie's on Twitter, and she's, like, responding to people because, of course, she's now the villain of the season. She's like, oh, well, all's gonna come out during the live because they're gonna have a live reunion next week. So I'm gonna be tuning in. You're able to ask questions live, right? She's like, it's all going to come out in the live and I have receipts and timestamps and all this stuff, right? She's trying to say that the conversation that happened with Josh that they filmed, she's trying to say that that happened after the conversation that she had with Marshall, but they played it in reverse. So they show the conversation with Josh and then the conversation with Marshall. So she said she'd already broken up with Marshall at the time that she met up with Josh. But what she was saying in the conversation with Marshall was that she just saw Josh and he was spilling his feelings for her and telling her how he felt, which is the conversation they had when they met up. So something they adding up. They obviously had a conversation. She was interested in Josh and then she went ahead and she's going to date Josh. And we've seen pictures of her at a baseball game. Was it a baseball game or a football game? But she's been out with Josh and taking pictures with him talking about my man, my man, my man. Like, what? And they've also been like leaked messages between her and her girlfriends. And she's dissing Marshall, like implying that he's gay or bisexual because she said he was twerking on the bed and talking about yas. So she had these like homophobic comments that she was spewing. And I'm just like, Oh my God, even if, okay, even if he's gay, okay, and he hasn't like 
addressed it yet or he hasn't like acknowledged it or maybe he's bisexual i don't know like that's not your place to judge somebody because of that like he's a person at the end of the day with feelings and emotions and obviously he's a sensitive guy that doesn't mean he's gay that doesn't mean he's bisexual and even if it did so what so what the only thing i would say is if he is gay so if he's only into men and he deceived you along the way into believing he was into women i get that okay but if he's bisexual then he's also interested in women so that was not necessarily deceitful but if he didn't disclose it to you like i don't know how to feel about that but you shouldn't like match that energy with with pretty much hatred right it's like she is disrespecting him because she thinks he's gay and i'm just like it's so tacky and i don't know what she thinks she's gonna reveal on the live like she's coming with receipts and all of this like i'm sure they're on the contract where they can't really say anything just yet but regardless of what you're going to say you're still a nasty person like let's be real you could have handled that situation a whole lot differently just like irena irena was nasty and zach was like all right let's call it bye you know josh kind of just got out of that real quick but marshall and her like they went through the whole honeymoon thing they went to live together and all this and all along she's like just love me and i'm like the whole way you dealt with that was nasty it was deceitful you gaslit him let's be honest and then when he's calling you out for it now you want to catch an attitude and say all kinds of things about this man you weren't right and i'm not saying he was necessarily right either but you know we don't know the full story because we'll never know what was edited out how it was portrayed and how they like edited clips to make things match up because even conversations are not necessarily continuous and fluid like they can pop in different sound bites in between like mix it up mix and match to make the conversation seem like it's lean in one way but however they framed it you still said the things you said you know and i'm just like wow i didn't expect her to become the villain of the season and like it was nasty it was nasty and i certainly didn't expect it from her i thought okay yeah she's a more rough and tumble girl like round the way girl she's a little bit rough around the edges and she's not like emotional and sensitive she reminds me of those girls that grew up around a lot of men and a lot of boys so she's like yo my dude you know like that kind of girl and she doesn't really play well with the emotional sweet sensitive guy that marshall was kind of pushed to be so i get it like that's not her vibe like she's more interested in josh because he's just like yeah like you know so i get that she's more attracted to that but that's not necessarily a positive thing like you know but again, you can't really fake it either because I'm not into like the really romantic sweet guy because I don't know how to respond to that because I grew up with boys and I'm rough and tumble and I'll say mean things. I see a little bit of me in her, honestly, truly. Like I've probably said things to guys before that were mean-spirited when I was in my 20s, right? I've probably done that and I've grown Okay. And I can admit that I wasn't necessarily the nicest in some situations. And I can look back and now see that I was not necessarily the nicest person. And she's still young and hopefully she'll grow. But so far, she, mm -mm, she is not coming off as a very good person. So I am interested to see the rest of the episode. So we have the four couples left to walk down the aisle. I feel like Brett and Tiffany are going to say yes. Kwame, I don't know. Micah and Paul may say yes. I don't know. We'll see. It's all up in the air right now, but this season is really spicy, guys. I am kind of living for it. I love to see mess in other people's lives, not mine. Okay, I don't like it messy over here, but let me see other people's lives. I am all for it. So, there you have it. The next couple of episodes, once they release, I will be doing a video, but I'll be traveling as well. So I'll try to edit and upload. We'll see how that goes. If the videos are a little bit delayed, just know that's what is happening. But here's the final look, which I really love, okay? It is not exactly like the inspiration, but it's so pretty. I love this. I used the Muse Lashes again from Kiss and the Jones Road Lip Balm. Hmm. 
It's cute. It's cute. It's a simple little tint. This is my first product from Jones Road. I'll see if they'll send me anything else. Oh, I forgot to show you guys my outfit. All right, so let me get over here. Ah! Almost fell. Oh, my God, almost died. I almost died just now. Let me get the chair out of the way. There we go. So this is just a white shirt dress with pockets in the front. We have buttons all the way down and a little fabric belt. Nothing too crazy, very simple. And I'm wearing my Tory Burch sandals. Simple, easy, nothing too crazy. You guys already know that I love wearing white and white works really well for colorful looks because it won't clash. So that's my outfit, gold accessories, all that good stuff. And all the other products I'll list down below in the description box along with links on where you can pick them up. If there's an asterisk next to any of those links, that indicates that it is an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through any of those links. It's a great way to show you support for the channel because it doesn't change the sale price and it gives me a kickback. So it's kind of a win-win. I also have discount and affiliate links down below to various websites. I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you should be following me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys.